Hello and welcome, this is Miles Gunner, and we're going to continue our look at Medieval Engineers with a new series I'd like to call uh, the Siege Weapon Series, or what I like to call, in, in all honesty, the Wacky Weapons uh, series, uh, because with this series I'm trying to think outside the box with a lot of my builds, not necessarily building traditional uh, uh, siege weapons, but things that, you know, are a little bit out of the norm. Now, if you watched my previous video, uh, I talked, or I showed, the last update. And unfortunately, that update corrupted that game world that I normally play with. Uh, I was able to salvage a couple things. I salvaged the, the test wall that I usually use to shoot my uh, catapult balls at, which we can go ahead and take a look at because we'll be using this as our test again. So, over on our right, we have the... Uh, the sloped wall, so this is a very thick sloped wall, as you can see, all the way like that. Uh, then we have just a normal thickness uh, wall here, uh, and I can show you the inside of that wall just so you can see. So essentially, there's the big slope, and then there's a space in here uh, with an arch, then another just a full uh, one block uh, wide wall, and then you just have your normal uh, thickness walls uh, on the upper level. The idea of this being someone, you know, the slope, it, you could just run up it. This uh, wall here stops you from running up it. So essentially that's that. The middle wall is just a normal thickness wall, but uh, double thick. So you have one wall and then an arch and then another wall. Um, so that's the middle section. And then the, uh, the last section, the one that will be on our left when we're firing, is just a full block thickness. Uh, then a, a normal wall thickness here and here, arch in the middle, and then another full block thickness uh, in front of that wall. And then, of course, you have the battlements on top. So that's our target. And I just wanted to point that out in case you haven't seen uh, the, the target wall before, what the different thicknesses are. Now, the main weapon I'm going to be focusing on in this uh, video is what I call the super catapult. Now, the super catapult... Uh, is the most uh, developed catapult I have uh, yet built, um, or siege weapon, I guess I should say. And it's pretty massive, as you can see, hence the super in the name. Uh, now, looking at a traditional catapult, now this is something I did kind of show in a previous video, and one thing I'd like to point out as a very important addition to uh, a catapult is this beam here that goes in front of the uh, catapult arm. Now that beam is going to arrest the uh, forward motion of the uh, arm. The arm will want to go more forward than this beam is allowing. This gives you a little bit more controllable uh, delivery each time uh, and a more uh, straight flight path, so it's a little bit easier to aim in. Uh, ob obviously, you can alter this flight path by putting the beam at different uh, uh, points along the travel of the arm if you want to get maybe a different arc on the throw. Um, so that is something you can adjust for if you want. So, I did the same thing here, except what we have here is obviously there are three uh, of these uh, torsion springs and three arms. And they're all linked together with catch blocks and beams. Now, the reason I did that is because you can't attach, and if we go ahead and try, you can't attach uh, these two arms together by just doing beams. It just doesn't work. It, they they want to push each other apart. It doesn't work. So what I did here is I did the catch blocks and then I did a, a rounded beam uh, to connect them all together. So they will all function uh, together uh, as one. Otherwise, it's more or less the same thing as a normal catapult. The only real difference is I added on a section here in the front for stability and I added a lot of these uh, uh, weight blocks. Uh, these uh, weight blocks here, if I can show you. These ones here, these weight blocks. I added a lot of those. Uh, onto the back, and, and both of those uh, were done to stabilize uh, the catapult. This thing has quite a lot of kick to it, uh, and if you don't put these front wheels on, uh, and if you don't put the weight in the back, uh, well, without the weight and without the wheel in front, uh, just building it essentially the same way I built this, except with the, uh, that, uh, obviously, three uh, torsion spring construction, the thing will just flip over under the, sh the, the power of the three torsion springs. So you do need to stabilize it quite a bit. Also, you need th that stability in front uh, because just with the weight in back, it will, it will stop it from flipping over, but it will still jump quite a bit, and you won't get very consistent accuracy. So 
Uh, that's one thing. Now there is another feature I'd like to add on to this that I kind of forgot to do before the video, but I can go ahead and show you what I'm going to do here. Uh, and I will demonstrate what this is all about a little bit later in the video. Uh, I'm not sure if I want it quite like that or not. And maybe that's not quite uh, long enough. We'll do one more. Okay. We'll see what that's about in a little bit. Okay, so let's just demonstrate the functionality of the catapult. So it's pretty simple. And the way that I built it, in case you're wondering, I kind of made these so that you can actually use it in uh, survival mode without being able to fly. So if we just jump up here, we can get up in here. And this will be our bin for a bunch of our large catapult stones. And if we jump up here, we have another bin for our small catapult stones. And then when you're going to operate the catapult, you just jump up here, you grab this hook, you grab the, uh, the uh, spool, you just tie the two things together, and then you get over here to the side and you just cr crank back your, uh, your crank until it goes back as far as it wants to. Of course, sometimes when you crank things back all the way, it glitches out a little bit. And then, uh, pretty much you jump up here and, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I need to do a little bit of a, a step up. You can do kind of a, a crouch jump sometimes to, ooh, this thing's glitching out a little bit more than usual. Um, you can usually do kind of a crouch jump sometimes to jump up on things, but in theory I'd put a little stepping stone here, jump up there, and then I could actually put the catapult stone in. But we're going to cheat and fly. So let's grab our catapult stone, throw it in there, and let her rip. Uh, let's get a good view of what's going on here as best as I can, and go. So as you can see, it threw that catapult uh, ball. Now this is a large stone, and as you can see, quite a far distance, very, very far distance. Just as a comparison, here's a normal uh, catapult. Now I know it's a little bit farther back, but uh, just as a comparison, we'll see how far this thing can throw. Uh, a catapult ball, uh, a large catapult ball. And that's one of the strengths of the super catapult is that it, uh, it kind of glitched in a way that I didn't really, uh, it seems like it just wants to be there, huh? There we go, that's a little bit further back. All right, now let's put a large catapult ball in here. There we go, and see how far this one flies. In comparison, as you can see, nowhere near the same distance. Uh, so this puts a lot, quite a lot of oomph on the the, uh, the throwing of the catapult ball. Now you could increase range of a normal catapult by making the arm just as long as I've made this one. But this one also puts a lot more power behind the uh, throw. And that power is especially good for the large catapult balls, which uh, uh, you tend to struggle with due to their heavier weight. So let's go ahead and do another throw. Now that distance was pretty good. But, and let it settle down. We might actually have to let this one go because it's glitching out a little bit too much. Oh, sometimes it just settles down. Uh, you know, this is early access still. Uh, some of the elements of uh, uh, these things are a little bit finicky. And I love how the, uh, the uh, beam here actually spins. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But anyway, uh, to show you what this, uh, you know, you get that distance. If you want even more distance, obviously what you're going to do is switch to a small catapult ball, which is why we have storage capacity for both uh, types. And uh, this is going to pretty much go into the stratosphere. So let's go. Oh, well, uh, technical difficulties. Sometimes this happens, uh, and I'll let it explode for you. Again, uh, a little bit glitchy on uh, early access, but I'll load back in the world, and we'll give that another go. Sometimes that happens occasionally. It's not really the fault of the catapult. It's just kind of the glitchiness sometimes of, of how things work. Okay, and we're back. Uh, we have another uh, small catapult stone ready to go. All right, so let's, uh, let's fling this one. All right, well, apparently, uh, when you try and record things, it doesn't want to work. And I love this when this happens. <laughs> Sometimes when your card explodes, it just wants to, uh, you know, drive forward on its, uh, its own here. Just And this thing will keep moving and keep moving and keep moving as long as it can. Unfortunately, it, was, it toppled over there, but it still wants to keep moving. <laughs> okay, I finally came to rest. I love when that happens. All right, so we have another glitch. 
I apologize. It looks like we're going to have to load in yet again. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do this attempt now. So we have a small uh, stone yet again, and it's all cranked up and ready to go. So let's give it a go. And there we have it. This time it didn't break. Third time's a charm. Took me three attempts to get it. But as we can see, it uh, looks like it fell just below uh, before the tree line. Um, so quite a far distance, as we can see. If I go stand by where that ball looked like it fell, uh, I kind of lost track of it. Oh, there it is. Looks like it fell about here. It, it went all this distance. Honestly, it looked like to me it was actually traveling further than that. Uh, it, it's possible it hit a tree and uh, broke up. And also, I must pay attention to the fact that because I loaded in, it's going to do the day-night cycle again. Uh, I, I, it's kind of annoying when you uh, save your game with the day-night cycle turned off. It always just wants to kick back on. But in any case, uh, that might be something I could set up in the settings. I never really did uh, pay too much attention to the, some of the settings sometimes uh, with these worlds. Okay, so let's see what it can do. And there's still one feature of this catapult that I haven't see, uh, showed you guys yet. So let's copy and paste it over in front of the wall. And I'm going to put it initially pretty close... Um, because I want to show you guys a particular feature. Uh, and I don't really know what kind of distance it's going to get uh, with this particular feature. Not the most level ground that I just put it on. Maybe I should uh, kick that over so it's not leaning so hard. Uh, yeah, that's alright. I mean, you get to see how this thing would work in, in uh, the real world. So, Alright, now the feature, I haven't yet showed you that. Those little... Uh, posts that I put up on front. What do they do? All right, well, let's let's see. There we go, all the way back, and that there, and our next catapult ball goes right in there. Oop, helps if you actually place it in the uh, area. There we go. That's retained. And then you tie the two blocks together. And let her rip. Probably I should uh, go off of this so you can see a little bit better. And go. As we can see, it uh, it comes out as a chain. I was a little bit too close uh, for the distance. It actually went a lot further than I thought it would uh, go. Uh, in testing that I've done before, it didn't go all that far. But that was before I uh, stabilized it a little bit uh, as well as it's stabilized now. So that might be part of the reason why it goes a little bit further than I initially expected it to. But let's push it back and see if we can get a hit. Okay, that's probably good. We just need to get our accuracy set up. Let's see if we're on target. Uh, a little bit to that side maybe. There we go. Now, I do have brakes on this thing, but I highly recommend that you don't put them on um, because, as I said, glitchy nature of the game at the moment, uh, it tends to cause your carts to do things that you don't really want them to. Uh, sometimes they do backflips or just decide to break apart and all kinds of things. So let's give this uh, double shot one more try. And it doesn't really uh, spin as much as I'd like to. Like, it spins initially, but as you saw at the end of the flight there, it kind of stabilized. Um, so it is uh, a little bit tricky. There we go. Uh, to get it to spin sometimes. But let's uh, go ahead and give this another go. So it spins initially, and then it just kind of stabilizes out and falls. But it is more or less two catapult balls falling as one. And as you saw, it did pretty good damage there. And that's actually not bad of a distance. This is the kind of distance I'd expect a single large catapult ball to go on a normal catapult. So that's pretty good distance. Let's see how we can experiment with this distance. Uh, let's get this thing way far back. Let's go for the middle wall. Get ourselves another super catapult out here. And let's try maybe this distance right here. Uh, on that middle wall. Looks like we're going to have to aim a little bit more straight. So let's bump this wheel a bit. That's probably a little bit too much, but we can check our aim. 
yeah, that looks like it's a little bit too much. I'm gonna just bump it a tad this way, although this is not necessarily easy to do sometimes. There we go, that's probably good enough. That should be our accuracy. So let's just give ourselves a normal large stone from this distance. I hope I don't clear the wall. That's a very good possibility at this distance because as we saw, the thing has quite a lot of range. Okay, that's as far back as it wants to go. And let's give ourselves another catapult stone. There we go. Now the large catapult stones are a lot, um, a lot more stable. Uh, it's usually the small catapult stones that I have the problem with the, the catapult just dis destroys itself like that. All right, here we go. Uh, it looks like that's on target and perfect. Oh, just a little bit short. Uh, but as you can see, uh, you know, we have quite a lot of range here. So let's bump ourselves up. Probably about here, and let's give it another go. That it was pretty close to the wall, so I wouldn't uh, imagine that it would be uh, too far off now. Okay, now let's put our uh, catapult stone in again, and give her another launch. Okay, that looks like it went a little wide of where I wanted but it hit the wall. So it hit the wrong wall, but it did hit a wall. And that's actually really good damage for a catapult at that distance. That's a pretty long distance away. And it did a fairly good amount of damage to a, one of these solid blocks. If I had hit this wall over here, I probably would have punched all the way through. So let's give ourselves another go. Our catapult probably bumped itself a little bit uh, on the last launch, which is why we were a little off aim. And I did push it a bit, didn't I? So looking at the aim, it looks like we are a bit to the left. So let's bump ourselves back over and give ourselves another go. And uh, I could do the small catapult ball and, and try and range that in. But that would be, you know, me just moving the catapult around a lot and trying to range it in. But as you know from what we were doing earlier with the uh, that uh, earlier launch, that this thing has a lot of range if you uh, use the smaller catapult balls. Another reason I don't want to use them is because, as we've seen, uh, it's it's not as stable uh, with the uh, small catapult ball. So let's go ahead and give ourselves another launch. Oh, it looks like to the left again, unfortunately. And short. All right. Yeah, the, the, unfortunately, the catapult does move around a little bit. As I said, I'd love to put the brakes on so that it didn't happen. Um, but as a consequence of not doing that, the, the, the catapult does move around quite a bit. So you do get a little bit of uh, inaccuracy shot to shot. That's kind of the problem with the catapult. All right, let's see our aim. It looks like we're aiming to the right, but uh, maybe if it kicks over to the left again, we'll get it more straight this time. It could be the ground that we're on, too, is canted a little bit so that uh, it keeps pulling us in that direction. Uh, that's true as well. You do have to take into account the terrain that you're on. All right, let's do one more shot, and then I think we'll be happy with our results either way. So let's go ahead and let her release. That looks like it's on our wall, and there we go. Perfect. And as we can see, quite a lot of damage. It punched completely through that wall, and it actually hit low. Not only did it punch through the wall, it hit the solid block that was the floor and destroyed, uh, destroyed well, well, really heavily damaged it, let's put it that way. And now it, we pretty much breached the wall. So if we only had that normal wall thickness, we would have just breached this uh, this wall. Another hit into the inside here and we'd be completely through uh, this wall if this was an exterior wall. So as we can see, quite good damage potential at a uh, pretty long range. Uh, this is this is pretty significant range. I would say at this range, you know, we're, we're probably outside of bow and arrow range, so even on top of that wall. So, you know, it kind of ticks that box uh, uh, of, of making a catapult that has good range, good damage at that range. Uh, and you could, as I said, calibrate things uh, to uh, get them in where you want it. Now, another thing that you could do is you can do a variant of this uh, catapult. 
uh, that is a little bit different. So let's go ahead and delete off some of these blocks that we've got. So this and this. And we can put on, uh, and just make sure I have one. I don't think I do. Uh, let's grab one of these. And now we uh, can set this up as a triple catapult. Oop, that helps if you put it in the right mounting point. There we go. There we go. Now, I'm not sure if this can uh, launch three of the large uh, uh, catapult balls uh, due to their weight, but we are going to find out. Now, this is probably not going to reach because we're set up for uh, the longer range, and having a longer arm is going to give you more range. But let's go ahead and just see how this works as far as range goes. We're not going to worry about hitting the wall, but this is just a variant of the super catapult that you can uh, use. So let's go ahead and let her launch. And as we can see, there's a lot of shot displacement there. They don't all fall on the same place, but they fall pretty close. And it's kind of a shotgun approach. You kind of get a spread of, uh, of, of hits. And if we were a little bit closer, in a, you know, in a more normal catapult range, we would have hit with three catapult balls at all at once. So that is an uh, option that is open to you. If you want a little bit longer range, you do the small catapult balls. We'll just end the video with that. If it explodes, it explodes. Uh, but let's go ahead and do three small catapult balls at once. You could even do uh, a couple, uh, you know, maybe one large uh, catapult ball and two small ones. It all depends on what you want to go for as far as uh, firepower. So let's do one, two, and three small balls. And let her launch. Now obviously the whole point of this is just launching them all at the same time. As we see we've got quite a bit of shot spread, but all three of them hit the target. Unfortunately that one, because it was such a high arc, actually bounced off of the sloped um, wall. But there you have it. So uh, there is a, a lot of a variety of things that you can do with the super catapult. You can make it a triple catapult. You can make it just a, a normal super catapult, which has the flexibility of having a uh, two balls chained together if you want to do that. It has quite a lot of range, which you can increase by using the small balls so that you're even further out. In any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed this initial uh look at my series of the siege weapons. I have a whole group over there of more siege weapons to go. Uh, this is Mouse Gunner, signing out.